Welcome to Indonesia Dental Podcast. Our today's guest is Dr. Sagar Hirani, who is the founder of Indian ear aligner company called 3D Align and a consulting orthodontist. In today's episode, we learn about what is orthodontia and how orthodontics work. What is clear aligners and when can you go for a clear aligner rather than the braces? And if you are someone who wants to pursue orthodontics as a speciality, then what can you look for in a college and what can you do in a MDS curriculum? And a lot more things with Dr. Sagar Hirani. Welcome to Indian Dental Dental Podcast, Sagar sir. Thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule and welcome to our podcast. In today's podcast, we will be learning about yourself. What is 3D aligners? What is orthodontics? And what will be the future of orthodontics? And a lot more. So let's start with something about yourself and something about the 3D aligners. Yes, first of all, I'll thank you that whatever you're doing, it's something new that you have come up with. And I'm really happy that you being my student and taking it forward in this way. I'm really happy for you for creating such kind of podcasts and getting all the dentists on single platform. So going through my history, I started my dental career in 2005, where I joined Ahmedabad Dental College and where I did my UG from there. In 2010, I passed my uh, entrance examination for Masters of uh, for MD. MDS and uh, I then joined my orthodontia. I chose orthodontics to be my profession because I was good at wire bending in my UG days. So I really loved the ortho department during those days. So that is how I started my career in orthodontia in 2011 and I got clear in my first attempt in 2014. Since then, I am practicing as an orthodontist. I am affiliated with Apollo Hospital since 2015 as a consultant orthodontist. I was, I'm being a professor in the same college where I did my master's, that is Karnavati Dental College. And currently, I'm professor over there. So, this is my brief history about orthodontics. And in 2019, going through aligners, I always had that vision in my mind that our orthodontic brand started with the removable appliances so then it moved on to the fixed appliances and there was no comparison of the results between the fixed and removable appliances because fixed appliances gave us the precise results that we wanted mm -hmm. removable appliances had lot many limitations the compliance from the patient sides so that all things were prevailing in the market and since 1997 there was a company called as Invisalign who was into the removable appliances with a transparent sheet as termed in the layman language that there is a transparent sheet to wear on the top of the teeth that can align your teeth. So that technology got revised and revised over a period of years and in 2014-15 the sudden change in the market for the orthodontia was there. Mm -hmm. So I explored that thing and in 2019, I com came up with my own brand. I worked with seven, eight companies prevailing in this Indian market. I got to know what are the flaws lying in the technology and how the removable appliance can be brought back into the market with a bang on with compliance of the patient and being invisible for anyone to know that whether you are going for the alignment of the teeth or not. So that is how I started to explore my journey in 3D aligners. I named my company as a 3D align and uh, we got ourselves trained from Spain and Germany. We brought the whole technology from overseas. Currently also we are importing many of the things from overseas and uh, we are catering to our Indian crowd within their budget. So that is how we are trying to still establish and upgrade our company day by day. So we have treated more than 500,000 cases in aligners. Definitely, there would be flaws lying in the technology, flaws lying in the execution of the work, flaws lying in the designing part. But over a period of time, we overcome all that flaws. And then we went into the market full-fledged as a company to cater to the different dentist. Mm. So this is my journey of an aligner. That's amazing, sir. And sir, can you tell me something like, what change did you see in yourself when you were in BDS, when you are being an MDS? MDS? Yes, that's a good question. 
Being a BDS gives you an inside knowledge of what dentistry is all about because we'll be working with different kind of br uh, branches for a certain period of time. Let's say if you are coming into the final year, you'll be working in each department for not more than a month because you have one year to complete all that thing. And from third year, you are exposed to your clinical work. But actually, when you touch on the patient's mouth, patient's teeth, you are given that privilege in the final year. So that is very limited period of time that you are working on the patient's finding it difficult to develop your skills to treat different kind of complexities of the cases so bds just gives me as per me the bds just gives the perspective of diagnosing the patient treating the basic requirements of the patient analyzing the thing and then if the case is of complex categories then you can decide on to call for the masters who are expert in that particular field to treat that thing but nowadays, lot many courses are being available where the BDS can, after doing the uh, bachelor's from the college, you can join that kind of particular courses to upgrade your skills and develop the skills to treat the patients. But as compared to the masters, I feel that if you're spending in one field nearly around two, three years, that gives you an insight, that knowledge of that particular field. And that changes your vision of how to see the patient in a multiple way thinking about what is going to be the future of that patient as compared to the dental needs. So if the patient is coming to you, let, let's say for an example, if it is coming to you just for the cavity purpose, but in that thing, you see the three dimensional occlusion of the patient and you feel that cavity is one of the primary reasons, but the etiology behind creating such kind of dental issues. Uh, I think that if you are able to visualize the full need that the patient would be requiring that only a MDS can have the eyesight for. Definitely. It is very difficult at the BDS level to teach you everything that how the patient should be catered and how it, the things should be diagnosed at the primary level and what should be the longevity of whatever the treatment you are going to do for. Definitely, sir. I totally agree with you because in BDS, like as you said, we'll be more than like a month or 45 days around that we get into a particular subject to practice it on mm -hmm. patient. And if you come about, uh, talk about the courses, it will be more than like two, three days workshops or a month workshop. Month more, workshop to, yeah. more than that will be a majorly three months workshop, not more than that. Not but more than that. the gap between three months and three years is a lot more. You will be exposed to a vast array of patients and a lot more complex cases that you can solve in it. So definitely MDS is a bigger jump to our knowledge and uh, clinical skills. Also, sir, if the suppose I am a student who has just started with the clinics in the third year, final year, or I am a BDS or a dentist who just know that there is a speciality of orthodontics, but don't know what is inside it actually. Okay. So what is orthodontics and what we what can we learn inside orthodontics? You see, being an orthodontist, I'll flaunt with my branch because particularly I feel that the orthodontics is only the branch that is seeing the occlusion three-dimensionally. Whether it is in sagittal plane, transverse plane, vertical plane, because we are treating the occlusion three-dimensional. As compared to the other branch, supposing if you take prosthodontics or periodontics, they are concerned with the gums. Mm. Process concerned with the rehabilitation of the occlusion. Okay, they would be doing most of the lab part three dimensionally, but outside the patient's mouth. And they would be creating what is best for that particular patient, but they would not be able to change the inherent architecture of the teeth that the patient is having. Ortho is the only branch that changes the architecture three dimensionally the way the orthodontist wants it to be. Let's say if the patient is having a class two mal occlusion, if you want to convert it to class one, we can do it, but the prosodontist or an endodontist cannot do it because of the said reasons and nothing negative about that branch. But the thing is that that if you are able to visualize occlusion three-dimensionally, if you are able to treat occlusion three-dimensionally, there is no branch like an orthodontia. And come, as you have said that a BDS doesn't know more about orthodontia in our particular country that what orthodontia is all meant about. The only things that we do is wire bendings and all, but we are not able to treat the cases. But nowadays the curriculum have changed. So we also are trying to integrate certain kind of basic things that is required. Let's say if you are in BDS and if you have opened a clinic and the orthodontic patient comes to you in some kind of emergency. So at least you are able to handle that kind of emergencies. If the wire is poking to the patient, you are able to cut the wire. And if 
the patient is come to you that one of the braces has been debonded so at least you can remove or you can rebond the braces in that so i feel that this is a branch where you can explore still more and you can treat the complexity the way you want the dentition of the patient to be definitely sir and as we are talking about the dentistry in mds uh, the mds admissions are started right now and okay. more, many of the students wants to take admission in ortho okay but they don't know or most of the time they have a one question in particular we have a google form on our website and on social media we have run a form the majority have the question like there is aligners okay. in the market that bds are doing okay and and there is MDS ortho, they are doing that orthodontic braces. Mm. As a BDS, if I can treat ortho cases as fit aligners, okay. then why should I pursue orthodontics? Okay. See, as a BDS, uh, whatever you are thinking to opt for the branches, your major concern of opting for the branch should not be based on whatever the things are prevailing in the market. It should be based on what kind of skills you want to develop, what is your liking and how you want to cater yourself in the market. So, if you are having a liking for certain particular branch, then definitely you can opt for that thing. But if you are thinking on that grounds that, okay, the aligners are prevailing in the market. Even if the aligners were not prevailing, there were orthodontists who are available in the market who comes to your clinic for the consultations and you can get your cases treated. It is one and the same thing. Even same goes with the implantology, same goes with the dentures. The prosthodontist is available. So, I think personally, what liking is there for inside you it should come up so that whatever you develop you develop in a harmony where you are being known for what you are doing in the market and talking about the aligners that okay it is prevailing in the market no doubt in that thing you just have to send the scan and everything is done at the back end and the whole kit is submitted to you and you can directly deliver it to the patient but even how the case is going to be executed, that is not a role of a company. Whether it is my company or it is some XYZ company. Ideally, that insight of biomechanics of how the tooth is moving, it depends on what kind of understanding you have. You can only rely on company, you can only rely on simulations once you know the basics of it. Supposing as a BDS, if I'm giving you a treatment plan that this is how my aligners are going to work, how will you justify that this is going to be the perfect plan or not? For that, you need to have the in-depth knowledge of that thing that, okay, this is how the orthodontia works. This is how the mechanics works. Mm -hmm. Then someone, if they are quoting you the plan, they are quoting you the sum, you can rectify it, you can cross-argue with them that how this is possible, why this is possible. So that all thing comes into play. So it should not be based on only just one thing that what is the availability in the market. Supposing if the patients are residing in your zone, they are not affording implants. So that is the reason that you will not take the periodontist or oral surgery as a branch. Mm -hmm. Why? Because your region is not having that kind of patients to pay for. Mm -hmm. No, that should not be the criteria. So as per me, the criteria should be such that what skills you want to develop, in which branch you want to pursue, and take it to the full. Mm. So that is my perspective of looking that what kind of colleges I should be looking for, mm. which branch should be I opting for, depending on what, supposing if one of the colleges is best in also departments, what is the best in that department you should look for. If one, every college would not be having all the departments working fully functional and having good staffs in all the departments. Mm. Every college would be trying to have that thing. But as we know that there are certain lacunas mm. that are prevailing. So before you choose for the MDS, you need to survey and verify at your end that which is best for you if you are entering into that college. Definitely, sir. And I totally agree with you because and I just thought that uh, not all aligners can treat all the cases. Yes, complexity is there. So uh, right now also speaking as an orthodontist, we get the measurements and we are being told that we want to treat only by aligners. So is it possible? But we tell them the limitation that, okay, if the teeth is rotated more than this degree, then hybrid treatment is good option for you. If it is falling into complex category of cross bites and everything, it is better to do the jaw correction first and then go for the aligners. So that are all kind of hybrid modalities that we are opting for. But definitely we can make good use of technology rather than using blindly and applying it blindly and then deteriorating the patient's life, 
it is better not to do not to touch rather than to do it halfway definitely and sir you have just mentioned a, a hybrid treatment can you explain something about what is hybrid treatment? I'll just give you an example of a case. Recently, I got a case where there was a posterior crossbite. Where the posterior dentition was collapsed. Mm -hmm. And even the anterior dentition was s 2 edge, Right? So, that posterior dentition, you cannot expand after a certain period of age. Let's say around 14, 15, because the maxillary suture fuses by that period of time. So, if you want to intervene, then you have to intervene surgically. You have to go for surgically assisted rapid maxillary expansion. And if you feel that, okay, only dentally it has to be corrected and only one millimeter is left, then you can think over it. So, there was a case falling under that category where the posterior dentition was collapsed and ideally it had to be expanded surgically. Mm -hmm. So, we explained the limitations to the doctor as well as the patient that this is the scenario and this is what we can do with aligners. There is certain limitation that you cannot go beyond certain kind of tooth movements in aligners. Still, the technology is evolving. Still, we are trying to create more room for more kind of tooth movements that can be done. But uh, seeing the present scenario, what we feel that if you offer a kind of hybrid thing, that means if you put braces and if you bring some kind of tooth movement with your pressure control in your hand, and then if you can switch to the aligner, that is what is known as a hybrid kind of treatment. Supposing if an RI patient is coming to you, is over here three four months then for one or two months you can derotate some teeth where you can reduce the number of aligners you can reduce the costing and then once that particular teeth has been derotated then you can ask the patient to shift to the aligners then you can take a scan and process the whole thing so that is kind of it's things that oh, yeah. you need to apply and this only you can apply once you have the inside knowledge supposing as a bds you won't be able to know but definitely if you've gone through the course of orthodontics you know, where you're spending three years of your life doing right from basics till advanced, then you'll be able to know that which cases to be taken in aligners, which cases has to be taken for only aligners or hybrid or only braces. So that is what I feel. Definitely. And it's something new that everyone are learning. Everyone are learning, definitely. We are also trying to promote through our channels that uh, what should be the case selection criteria to treat only with aligners, mm -hmm. what should be the case selection criteria to treat with the braces. Each and every patient is of braces. Mm -hmm. No one is perfect in this world. So uh, everyone would be requiring alignment. But there are certain things that, okay, the nature will try to compensate for whatever the malocclusions you are having. Mm -hmm. So if it is more than 90-95% compensations, the people are not going for the also kind of treatment. So, the main thing you need to make aware of the patient is you need to make them aware that what condition they are having, what is good for them and how you can treat them the best. Definitely. So, you should be ethically clear on your grounds before touching the patient. Definitely, sir. And uh, in our conversation, you have earlier mentioned about the colleges. colleges so, yeah. if uh, someone is take, wants to take admission in MDS or so, okay, what he or she should look for into a college? Okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. That, that was the main thing which I also was confused during my PG time because I didn't had any guidance. But once I went into the college and once I explored myself, I felt that before choosing a college, you should go and have a look at the college premises, the locality where you are going to stay, and the distance you are going to commute. Why? Because in longer period of run, that is going to matter because you will be completely occupied in your college time. Then again, if you're to travel back around, let's say one or two hours from there to your place, right. then there would be nothing left after the college hours for you to do. If you want to explore something new, if you want to have an observership at some of the clinics, mm -hmm. then you should be first of, and foremost, you should be visit, uh, visiting college for that kind of things. Second, you should be looking for the college staffs mm -hmm. where the staff in my days, there were we had our department had the staff where the professors were from all different colleges. So we had that advantage of getting the knowledge from each and every different region aspect. Some were from let's say Kelly, Belgam, some were from Civil, some were from Rajasthan. So in different uh, regions, different kind of practices are prevailing. Mm -hmm. So get to know the insights of which college is doing what things. Earlier, civil was a uh, civil college. We had only the bags technique, so they were masters in bag. Mm -hmm. So, we had a professor who was trained in bags. Some colleges were masters in MBD technology, mm -hmm. that is a straight wire technique, what we call nowadays. So, in our 
we had that privilege to learn each and everything in the most unique way so if you are having the professors from all around across the region that is the best thing to explore because you will be getting insights of each and every technique mode and second you should be choosing the college where you are allowed to explore yourself to treat the patients the way you want starting from basics even though it is obsolete in the market but still you need to know that because that application will help you somewhere or the other in getting your technology advanced why the evolution has happened it is only from the basics that we have evolved we started with removable we went to the fixed and then again we are back to the removable so we say the earth is round we are coming back to where we are but in a better way so you will be able to get only the inside knowledge only if you know the basics right so choose the college where you have different staffs from different multiple colleges try to figure out that thing even though their name would not be so famous but you can definitely get in contact with the pgs who are already doing the courses over there get to see what cases they are treating over there what are the complexity of the cases they are getting in that particular colleges because if you get a wide range of cases with different complexity then you will be trained and skilled more to do everything so i feel that selection of the college is going to be the crucial part in developing yourself for that particular skill yes sir so that all things you should know yeah and also sir like i have heard in one of your lectures that earlier the wire bending is a major portion of the orthodontics right now the bracket placement is a major portion so it evolved from wire bending to bracket to bracket positioning wire bending you need to create a dexterity in your hand mm-hmm. to hold the plaz why we do wire, even in the uh, yes. orthodontics right now also we have a curriculum of 6 months where you go need to go through basics mm-hmm. means you have to straighten up the wire you have to do the adams class you have to do a retainers you have to do bows and everything and plus you have to do first second third order bends of the mbt technique for that so that will create a grip that will create a uh, dexterity in your hand that how much pressure you have to apply at what particular point mm. if you are treating to the patient and if you want to like it something if you want to tighten up something what should be the calibrated pressure point at that particular so that the patient doesn't feel discomfort at the same time the patient should not feel your hand too much hard mm. in applying the pressure so at the same time you have to be gentle and at the same time you have to be effective so that is how we are being trained in orthodontics so right from manual dexterity to having a clear vision because for anything to deliver we have to keep a end result in mind supposing if i want to make class 2 mal occlusion to class 1 normal occlusion mm. i should be having that vision that okay how i want to go ahead and what should be by the end result mm-hmm. so keeping end result in mind i have to start at some starting point so that is a beauty of orthodontics so you already have your vision clear before you touch the patient definitely sir and i always love the orthodontics for that but as you have to plan the whole treatment then you have to start you and you have to start. yes you have to exactly know so we had our profit means and that is i think prevailing uh, in each and every college that we have to do a case presentation mm-hmm. we have to take the intra oral extra oral photographs we have to take opgs and cef we personally used to go calibrate the patient in the opg and cef machines to see the fs plane is parallel to the floor and everything each and every detailing to be perfect so after that we used to have a case history of the patient we used to do the measurements technically now the softwares are there but still we need to input the points in the software to generate that report and then we used to analyze the whole thing we used to devise a treatment plan and that all we used to do on a powerpoint presentation and once our plan was approved then only we were supposed to touch the patient so that is what best taught me in karnavati college because that was the protocol that we had set in our college that was the protocol set by our hod and the professors that this is how the student has to learn and till the moment your treatment plan is not approved you are on your toes mm-hmm. and we should not say but they used to humiliate us in front of the patient they used to literally make us feel that you are not worthy of treating the patient only then that thing comes out of you okay because something is discussed in front of the patient then you feel that thing okay that my name is going to now deteriorate if i'm not going to work hard for that thing mm-hmm. so every time we used to go with double pressure that okay this time our plan has to be perfect 
and our plan has to be approved and we are not going to get humiliated in front of patient and we are going to get the direct green signal to start with the treatment. Mm. So that kept us on toes and that also kept a sense of competitiveness within ourselves to be a shade better every day. Mm. So that is what we feel that whatever you are today, you should be always a shade better as compared to yourself yesterday. And it will in increase your accuracy as well. Incre increase your accuracy and that thing should be there in your mind that okay, you want to constantly upgrade because medical and dental field is constant all about up upgradations. If you are not upgraded, if supposing if I have not brought the aligner, still I would get the patients to treat with the braces. Mm. But if the technology is moving and if someone is asking for me and if I tell them, no, I don't know that thing or I don't do this thing, mm. that is wrong on your part. It is not wrong on the patient who is coming to your clinic because he would be uh, right now the awareness has been so much in the market that the patient is googling everything even the treatment plans they sometimes discuss with us so whether these rotations will be treated with the aligners because they would be they would be searching that what are the limitations of aligners what if anything goes wrong then all these things are popping up in the google so they would be googling and they would be directly asking us that kind of question so it in a way it becomes easy for us to make them understand because already they have done their research mm. and plus they have the added advantage of our knowledge shared, to be shared with them. So I feel that this all thing should be there and the college who are having all kind of latest equipments be it in digital world mm. or manual world they should be under constant upgradations to get all the new things mm. for the PG students to try on. Try on in the sense in a uh, specified way. So, I think that that should be the criteria, one of the criteria in selecting the colleges. Mm. Or also, sir, uh, many of students are afraid to take ortho because they feel that in a BDS, I was very bad with the wire bending. Okay. So, they don't opt. For Ideally, it for me, if considering that point, you should be opting first for that branch because you were bad. So, at least you are now well versed with that branch. So, anything you are bad at it, you should do it first. Rather than keeping it aside for a lifetime, mm. you should be doing it first and you should be clearing it down because you never know what kind of patients are going to fall back upon your clinic, right. what patients are going to trust you, what for. You would be having a normal clinic, but you would be having a great OPD in ortho. Mm. Maybe because you might be uh, calling a consultant and he would be doing a great work for you, but ultimately he is coming to your clinic. So your name is going to be highlighted more as compared to his name. Mm. So, even if you are able to handle the emergencies well and if you are able to treat the patients well, I think you should think on that grounds rather than thinking on the grounds that your wire bending was not good or not appropriate during your UG days. So, I don't have a liking for ortho because it is not just about wire bending. There, is, there are a lot many things that you can do in ortho mm. and in a simpler way, keeping it very simple for the patients. Don't try to complicate things. Be very clear. Definitely. I am going to ask about this question. Like, What will be the future of orthodontics if someone is want to pursue their... The, keeping see, currently, what will be the future? I, do, I like to live in present, mm -hmm. but definitely keeping future in mind. So, I feel that the future is now because our line has already have their, they are involved. And seeing four or five years down the line, every orthodontist would be having their own brand of aligners. So, it is something like that, whatever we are going right now to treat the cases with the braces, we take our own kit and go and treat the patients. Mm -hmm. Same thing will be for the aligners. So, if you want to move on to the technology, this is the right time to move on to the technology, mm -hmm. apart from whatever basics you are doing. And you can collaborate and work together in a harmonious way, where you can help each other out in lifting each other up. Mm. So, that is going to be the future of orthodontics that no single person is going to cater all kind of cases. Earlier, we had that only one orthodontist in the region. Now, we have many options. So, collaboration is only the way mm. and keeping all egos and grudges and self-competitiveness aside. If you collaborate well, you choose your people which you want to collaborate with mm. so that your mind frame sets in with them. Then you can take it up. On a longer run for that. Definitely, sir. And also, uh, can you give some advice to a person who is doing their BDS? Advice in what sense? In what sense? Like uh, most of the time, right now, the BDS students are uh, less motivated towards dentistry because uh, what they are pursuing, what they see 
them like they see their seniors what they are yeah, doing yeah, and yeah. they will be going through a struggle phase struggle phase okay but i want you to see them as what will be the at the top of the peak and what okay. will be the see uh, i would i would not recommend any kind of bds but we have seen in markets where bds are doing more better as compared to mds mm. because what you need to learn in your undergraduate days is the communication skills with the patient mm. 90% of your patients are converted only through your communication skills no matter however good work you are having the patient will not feel as soothing unless you communicate well to them mm. so if you are doing your basics right and self motivation is the prime thing that you need to look for if i am coming and giving you a lecture of motivation that is going to last for only 24 to 48 hours then what mm. so unless you are self motivated nothing is going to help mm. you in the world you yourself have to help for your betterment mm. so if you feel that uh, why this dentistry is not taking into place and why you are not feeling self motivated go through all the dentists who are doing good work mm. go through all the cases that can motivate you go through the likings that you have for that particular field if you like ortho or if you like perio or if you like prosto see the works mm. of the particular dentist who are doing well in that field that will motivate you that okay i want to be good like mm-hmm. him or i want to be a shade better than him definitely so that is how you should constantly keep yourself motivated sometimes we also feel low mm-hmm. because we are ultimately are humans so right. working 24/7 is not an option we also need to take breaks so that means whenever you feel demotivated that means your mind needs some relaxation mm-hmm. so just take a day off just explore yourself just do other things whatever you want to then again come with the full energy and full with full enthusiasm to take it definitely and sir uh, as you have said you have done plenty of cases like for thousands thousand so you have come up with uh, patients who are talking about some myth or some beliefs can you uh, can you tell myth and the- beliefs they, see they are available lot many on google we don't know okay. what kind of myths the uh, people are bringing with us mm. some people come with the myths that okay the cases cannot be treated with aligners because some of the orthodontists who are not doing it with aligners they would be telling the patients in that way mm. and then the that patient keeps on moving in the market some would be telling that only the cases can be done with aligners mm. but this is why you want to go for because it's not comfortable this kind of myths the bds develops right because they want to do it by themselves mm. so myths and facts are depending on us only that how we are propagating the things in the market mm. so there are nothing like there are myths or there are facts the only thing is it should be evidence based mm. whatever you do it should be supported by literature what is prevailing in market and if you feel that something is new mm. then you should be the literature for the market right right so that is what i feel that if i have come up with something with mm. kind of new treatment uh technique mm. and it is not there in the literature but i have developed it myself then i should be the literature for the market to get them that okay this is how you can do it mm. apart from doing it in this way right and if i already have the literature in the market and if i'm doing it that or uh, uh, taking that thing into mm. consideration and if i'm doing it well mm. then i should be showcasing that thing that okay because based on this literature mm. i'm doing this kind of cases well and these are my results mm. so automatically your myth and facts gets into streamlined and they are filtered out right definitely sir and for the last part uh, as you have the founding member of a, a one of the growing aligner company can you tell me how someone I'm a proprietor to- of this clinic dental line and working as a consultant orthodontist at apollo i am professor at kanavati college and i am a owner of a 3d line company So right now we are into four things mm. as compared I'm managing four different things at a time. So if one person can do this many things then definitely anyone can do it. Definitely. That is what I feel. Mm. So yes you can go ahead with your question. Right. What, so what the question is if one someone wants to get into the aligners yeah. if they are practicing dentist and wants to get into the aligners or if I am student and I want to start practicing and I want to get into the what aligners are and how to get into it. so what can they do i would i would definitely i would say that you contact us mm. you see how we are working what all things are required mm. to treat a case what arvam and trims are required what kind of investments are required mm. and how you require a team to do and execute that case 
talking at a clinical level if you want to treat it by yourself then what are the things that you would be requiring in a clinic as a setup for an aligner mm -hmm. because we do provide doctors aligner kit to treat the patients for aligner so i think it is better to have a one to one conversation with some of the person like supposing let's take an example of me or my company mm -hmm. if you are doing it you get in touch with us then you take a call how you want to go mm -hmm. ahead with that thing so get in touch with a person who is already doing it mm -hmm. get the insights of it on a genuine background and then you take a call for yourself that okay how you want to integrate aligners into your practice mm -hmm. we have different modules running we take short courses of 3 4 hours where we teach that how the what are the basic requirements of aligners what are the pre treatments that you need to do before aligner therapy mm -hmm. and uh, what rmm entrants you should be having in your clinic what also support you need at times mm -hmm. and how you can integrate your aligners into practice with us so we take this kind of regular courses at five star hotel hilton we have tied up with uh, we have also tied up with taj mm -hmm. so once in four months we conduct this kind of courses and our presence is pan india where we have a good network of dentists who are believing in us and we are more into service provider with the quality Mm. we don't take cases as to earn money i am being means me being the whole and sole planner in the company as of now i choose my cases in aligners i get lot many inquiries for aligners cases but supposing if i feel that no this case cannot be touched only with the aligners the results are not going to be that satisfactory mm. our company refuses to take the cases even if the same case can go to the different company but we are very clear from our ethical ground that we want to treat but we want to treat in a quality way and once a case has been given to our company we ensure that the results are there mm. till the time the results are not there supposing if you have committed that this case can be treated in 20 aligners let's take a example of midland asthma mm. it's a case of 6 to 10 aligners or 12 aligners max and if the patient is following the protocol properly and if the results are not achieved as whatever we have designed mm. then it comes as a moral responsibility of our company to rectify that thing till the time the results are desired means if more number of aligners are needed apart from what we have quoted then it is borne by our company we don't let it go to the patient or to the doctor who is treating that case so that is the assurity and guarantee that we give that once your case is there with us we assure and guarantee the results are going to be there provided if you follow the protocol as directed by our company Definitely, sir. And thank you so much. I hope many of the listeners want now want to take so. into the definitely. If you and... come to any kind of queries and if you still want our help, we are open twenty four seven. Our I'll be sharing you the contact definitely. details and everything with you. You can just highlight it out. And if anyone's to know more about Karnataka or Ahmedabad Dental College, I'll be happy to share with them the experiences that I have. And definitely, they can take the feedbacks of our for our name from that college. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, and thank you so much for coming to our podcast. I hope many of the listeners know something more about orthodontics, and they will feel more knowledgeable. I right? Hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you so much, Doctor Rohan, and nice meeting you. And thank you, sir. I'm really happy for what you are doing. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for watching till the end. Hope you have got some value from this episode. We have placed all the necessary links in the description. And if you want your questions to be asked in our upcoming podcast. there is a form in the description and on our website so do check it out and give us a like and subscribe to our channel to support our work thank you so much